Oh, that's cool. Wait, yeah, I think it's got a mic right here, bro. We can maybe hook up to the mic. Oh, it's on mute. We, we got fine audio out of the webcam. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I'll just keep this laid out. It's muted right now. Like, like it would definitely be if I brought in my snowball and had us do the audio through that. It would definitely be better than what we're getting. Mm -hmm. The problem is that we're just make the setup time and takedown time longer every week. Yeah. And it's just like. It's not, it's not like it. Yeah. <coughs> Makes sense. Oh, what are y'all been up to? Midterm. Anything new? Midterm. 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 Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's that time of year. Midterms. They yeah. went. They went, yeah, they, they came, came they saw, they fucked me. <laughs> uh, I better thought. My, my midterms were bad. <laughs> yep. My midterms were bad. I guess I only have two midterms, but I have more than two classes. I had one yesterday. Yeah? What, what was that? Your DSP. How was that? He extended the time twice, and even with two extensions not a single person turned it in like early like everybody was like just still working on it up to the last minute That's crazy. yeah so it was pretty rough <laughs> and this is like a 50 person class too it's not like it's like a small class size so <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. And it was like the whole thing was out of 25 points, and there was one part that was worth 10. So it's like if you got that, you were basically set. <laughs> Almost 50% of the test on one question. <laughs> Am I on? Am I on the video? Huh? No, no, I just have it on the splash screen. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. The lab, the my, lecture. Do you want to be on? My, I know. I <laughs> do you want to yeah, be on? Flip it on for just a second. Sure. If you're watching, Josh, it's the hack pack. Look at that. Look at that stuff. POE switch. Boy, what you got? <laughs> <laughs> Bet you he's not watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just have to tell him to rewatch uh, Meeting 75. You see just these, listen to the first minute. You see these pies? <laughs> You know I got that paper. I got the peel switch. Oh. <coughs> All right, I got Jai's speech in. Said to me, I'll read Jai's speech. Do you like a beer? He's in uh, uh Portland. Portland. Portland for a work trip. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chris, our guy. Yeah. Morrison? Yeah. He should be on the way, man. Right? We like have you, have you, so anyone that. reached out? Huh? I love your video, I just saw that. Like, yeah? Like, oh, this? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Thanks. <laughs> I'm doing it right here. Well, actually. Wait, we have to talk? Yeah. Yeah. I have it. Should it be like right here? No. That's what we talked about. You go off, you get safe like humor, save little speech. Huh? What is that? It's, it's, it's just don't be super long. Just, yeah, just try. I mean, obviously, like it depends on position. If it's like you're running for president. I'm running unopposed, so like. Then I guess. So the well, the Google Form does you know what I mean? Google 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 other options. Oh, you do. You do. An answer. Yeah, so don't don't get too cocky. A very good speech. All right. Greg, theoretically, everyone could select the other option and write in someone else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, uh, Maybe I'll have to change my Do we have 4K streaming? No, 1080p. 1080p. Yeah. And that is that is the hard limit, especially with okay. this thing can barely. this camera? No, the camera's 1080p, and we have it in the corner, so the camera we have way over resolution. This thing cannot do oh. a, a live transcode of anything higher than 1080p. Who goes on like YouTube and like, oh yeah, sees streams? Huh? 
Everything is not. No, no one goes on YouTube to view shit. I have a shit. Yeah, yeah, my shit. People do. When I was in Cleveland, I was yeah. watching yeah. them all. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. He's not talking about ours. Like, if he's saying we should go on Twitch because this was like, there's more likely for traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah well, like, okay. random people dropping in to like, talk. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> Well, I, mean, having YouTube. I mean, having as many platforms is always not a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, can we double stream it? Yeah, I mean, it's already encoded, right? Is that a thing? Double stream? It's, you either have to have a server that you set up or you have to pay a service to do it. We can just, set up a server. We, yeah, we already, we get zero viewers on one platform. If we split our viewers across two <laughs> platforms, well, we will no, get no, even zero viewers. viewers. <laughs> viewers we will get negative viewers. Platform. You have your YouTube. Those are not the same as your Twitch viewers. You know. Do you run over anything? No. Different, different viewers. Nah, no, nah. No. Never know, man. We might get some bits. Yeah, give me fundraising, dude. <laughs> make subs, make some subs. <laughs> All right. Some people might want them to do that. You see this? Yeah, I can run. With the U.S. band. What? I this dude really looks like When you show me each one of the uh, when you hopefully that might be the chat when you go on Twitch. I just got them yesterday. What's your first sound on the Yeah, that's pretty bad. It's in the sweepers. Oh, XTC that's a long time ago. Like, that, that yeah, battery is nice. I didn't, I didn't know about this battery until like a week, like last week. Wow. It's cool. I, 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 saw, I thought I saw a scan somewhere. It's a 20,000 milliamp hour battery. And, and it'll get lighter. Yeah, just... Hey, Cor, Chris, I got to the half pack. What are the more? That's the most powerful power source for supply I've ever seen. Did you add a pack? Because last episode? I know. Hey, Hayden, my, I, I'll let you know our viewers are offended that you would assume that there are no viewers. Somehow. Oh, did someone actually post in the chat? No, that's my coworker talking to me. Oh, look, it's Tyler. Yeah. I post this stuff in the chat. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Twitch. Actually, watch on. We're gonna we're gonna wait a little bit longer because Corey's on his way. He's close. And then we'll then we'll start things off. Yeah, that's for a host. So no more dog. No, no, no. We've staying with us for the past like night or so, so. Okay, I just left it off. No more dogs. I was just letting you know. No more dogs. I'm just No. <laughs> like we went to dinner. My I went to dinner with my parents last night, and Ryan and AJ were just hanging out. Right. With I think you changed your need a minute. Like, what? <laughs> Another committee. <laughs> cool. They just had a song. All right. So, we're gonna uh, we're gonna start this off here with Corey here just a second, I guess. Do you want to start with the announcements? We went to Facebook and they gave me this guy. Oh, look at this. Oh, they're like, yeah, we can sell it. It's like, oh, you want to sell it? Yeah, we'll do it. Probably 12 people watching. Watching it. Our viewers are just like going to scum. We have at least one viewer in Thailand. They're like, oh, freaking bet. I'll watch. We're going to blow up four viewers next week, 400,000. Four hundred thousand. That sounds. Like double I will bet. Reasonable. I will bet four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Tyler says he's a fan. I mean, huh? Tyler posted that. He's if you're a betting four hundred thousand dollars, yeah. we three watch. I might be able to make it happen. That four hundred k though, p- hey, viewers. Does close that back door there? That's a we'll lot. I, I right could here. get about two k myself. Well, sure. And but four hundred k. That'd be a lot. I'd advertise on campus, oh win me 400000 Yeah. <laughs> Josh says hi. He, Josh says hello, you cyber. Hello, you cyber. We are cyber at UC. Yeah. I hope you he heard that. Yeah. Oh, gee. Oh, I would call it you cyber, but that's a, that's a label, not a sentence. So, can't have that. Nope, we'd be marketing. You want to kick things off? Are we ready? <clears throat> yeah. I thought you said we were waiting for Corey. He's on his way. He'll, he'll probably get here soon. Uh, we have some other stuff to talk about anyway. Kick it off. All right. Well, guys, welcome to our meeting, 75. Um, we're getting up there. Almost at 100. 75. Almost at 100, right? That's pretty huge. More. That's 100. That's 75 weeks. 
We are of meetings. Ridiculous. We are so close to 100. We are 75 percent of the way there. Yeah, yeah I guess did the math. I'm pretty sure I got it right. You might be off by a couple of percentages, but we're just cyber guys. We're not mathematicians. So today we're going to have a topic go, uh, led by Chris, I believe, um, over the MITRE framework continued, I guess, um, initial access, I believe. This section, yeah. So um, anyone new? There's the man. I don't think anyone's new. So announcements. We got some emblem updates. Check this beautiful emblem out. <laughs> this is what we're working with right now. Um, yeah, I think yeah. it looks pretty cool. I've been working with uh, working with my buddy who is good at drawing and do this for us and uh, Tatum. So it's, it's pretty good. You know, <clears throat> if you have any uh, recommendations on things we could do better, uh, let me know. Or things that you think we could do on this logo or emblem, I guess we should call it. Uh, I want to get this on like, like a shirt or something. You know, like some shirts or like challenge coin or something. Yeah, I think it's pretty dope. Uh, have I told you guys what all the things stand for? I think we already went over that. I'm mean, gonna go for it again. Yeah. It's supposed to be the WASPs are for OWASP, which is our organization. We have the uh, the eye and the, well, the stuff on the shield uh, is steps in the cyber kill chain, which we've covered, right? The shield stands for cyber defense, and the sword stands for cyber offense, right? Um, and it's on a globe, a wireframe globe, because it's a global issue. Cybersecurity is. Uh, and then the I stands for reconnaissance. The lock is for exploitation. The marionette is for command and control. And the target is for actions on objective, which are like a simplified kill chain. So, and that's on the shield because we're defending against that. I think one thing that we could improve is probably like remove one of these lines or two because it kind of looks like a little <laughs> satanic. Yeah, I like, could. Uh, <laughs> but in that, you know. Really close. Yeah. <laughs> Cyber EC. It's literally uh, one, line it's away one, one line away from away. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's add that one so, line. That's, that's that. We're adding it. UC yeah, I'd say probably my, my favorite part is that instead of just handwriting of the cyber at UC, it's actually a font now. Mm -hmm. Literally, I was about to say that is the part I think they need to fix. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, oh. that is the part I think, yeah, it needs to change. <laughs> Differing opinions. Change, change. Well, no, it's better than just like that. It was handwritten. I kind of liked it handwritten. It's oh, you had, did? Yeah, yeah. It sort of had like a like a autistic vibe to it. What's <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it sort did of you had mean like a artistic. Artistic. <laughs> My bad. Okay, let's go to the next thing. Let's All right. Next so moving on. Um, we've been talking about this for a while. We actually had someone come in. Um, what was her name? Ha Kathy. Um, I think Kathy. Yes, to talk about the NSA internships. Um, if you're just hearing about this now, sorry, you're a little late almost. I mean, tomorrow is the deadline. So I guess if you really want to get in there, <laughs> throw it in now. But basically, just to let everybody know, the deadline for turning these in is tomorrow. So you ain't got no more time. No. Um, I can talk so, about this one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we actually met with. Um, some people from U.S. Bank, their uh, head of their security team down there, and uh, one of the guys who works there. They're extremely interested in what we do here at Cyber at UC. Um, like after our visit, which I, I think well, a number of us went, I guess, raise your hand if you've been with a U.S. Bank visit, right? So yeah, yeah, number Huge deal. It was great. Um, so they really liked what we're doing with school outreach, and they said that they're willing to start providing drinks and snacks and stuff at our outreach events and whatnot. Um, they want to work with us and come out with us on our outreach events and uh, kind of help us with our content at these, uh, these, these schools that we visit. Um, they want to maybe start bringing us in for shadowing where we visit U.S. Bank and learn about a different uh, cybersecurity topic or a different aspect of their security operations center. So we would go in for a visit and learn about their pen testing only pen testing, going for a visit and learn about how their cyber defense analysts analyze things at the first level. Um, so we can start, we can start like a, uh, an entire series and relationship with them. Uh, so this is really great. U.S. Bank's awesome. Um, but that, that's, that's all I really have on that for U.S. Bank. That's in the works. Yeah, what it's up? a big deal. Just uh, bouncing off that, we do have an outreach with the Philly East this coming Monday. If anyone wants to help out with that. 
Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This Another coming Monday, Lakota East. It's our final one. We're running a CTF. Do you want to say any more details on what you might need help on or what else is, this uh, is up? So mostly we're just going to need people to like, we're, we're actually going to move the CTF to be there. So all, all I'm asking really is for uh, people who want to come and help out, just work through the first couple levels of the CTF. Uh, we're going to put together like an answer key that people can reference. And just so the people who are there can actually like help guide people through this because they have little to no cybersecurity experience. <clears throat> so this is going to be like their first real dive into it. This is 2 p.m. on Monday. 2.30 2 2.30, okay. Now we're going east, which is about 30 minutes from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, let's see. I think there's another something else that I think is in the slides up here. Mahafi, did you uh, find out some more uh, news on our social events? Do you have anything you'd like to share? Yeah, so I um, heard about this hotel um, downtown of the Banks. It's the AC Hotel, and they have a really, really cool rooftop that's like, has a view of like the Great American Ballpark, like everything in the Banks, like Smith Park, whatever. Um, and like they have like a bar and like really, really cool place to be. So I reached out and got a quote. Um, and yeah, that's the view. It's really cool. So I'm going to be in contact with them um, to ask some more information. And we can wage interest here and see who will be interested in something like that. But not yeah, really. how many of you would be interested? I think that'd be sweet. Right? Okay. We can throw a banger. We can throw a banger. Yeah. <laughs> we can throw a banger. It'd be a good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we can invite a bunch of people. And that's, that's an awesome venue. And it looks modestly priced. Which is awesome. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, Definitely going no. on a good weather day. That's it. <laughs> okay, cool. Right. Thanks, Mahapi. This is awesome. She's she done a great job setting this up. By the way, I think we never said it, but sign in. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's Everyone right. Sign in. Sign in. I forget to sign in. So sign in. You sure do. Sign in now. Yeah, I know. I've, I've signed in for like, <laughs> man. Four meetings. Four. It's bad. Uh, four, and you've been for all 75. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's like a terrible percentage. But all right, anyway, um, meeting, <laughs> we'll, wrap, we'll wrap up these announcements. We have officer elections today at the end. Oh, sh yeah. Yeah, even totally fun bigger reason. news. This is better. We've been oh, talking yeah. about this forever. This way better than elections. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's up, guys? So this is our first big, like, fundraiser that we've done. Uh, Chipotle, the one on, I forget what the street is, actually. McMillan? Clifton. It's, it's, Clifton. Clifton. it's one Clifton. It's on Clifton, yeah. West Clifton. It's on West Clifton. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, you live on that street. I know, you that's know why it. I would uh, say. <laughs> but yeah, it's on West Clifton <laughs> Avenue, uh, you know, between McMillan and Calhoun Street. And uh, November 3rd, so Saturday, 4 to 8 p.m. Um, you have to mention these flyers or we don't get the money. And if we don't raise at least $300 like worth of sales from this, then we don't get anything from it. So make sure that... You guys all go, which should probably be like about half the money there. And then if you can all bring like one or two friends, we are, we'll be in the clear. You can show them it on your phone. Yeah, well. you can also show it. I'll be blowing up the group message uh, for the Slack. Probably have people there handing out flyers. Uh, you actually can't do that. They, you can't. They null and void your contract if you hand stuff out there. <laughs> oh, wow. see, that's good to know. Yeah. That's, that's really good to know. All right, well, yeah, please take flyers. Pass them around. Yeah, I, I, I handed some out, but if you guys want more, give them to friends or whatever. Leave them in leisure halls. Yeah, right here. I, think I would love Saturday, some of those. November third to be Enjoy. national. Go to all my classes Saturday tomorrow and just pass them out to people. Have you like put them around campus or something? I've, I've done other fundraising and stuff in my fraternity before, and I found that just like putting out posters of like almost every organization does this, and it just like you don't really get that much turnout just from having it up. But it's more from like individuals reaching out to their friends and roommates, and you know, bugging out. Actually, talking to people that you know, exactly, and spreading and, like, the word. Drag your friends there. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. Well, we've been talking about that for a while. It's finally here. If we can yeah. keep raising money and uh, having more fundraisers, we might be able to even take more people to uh, DEF CON. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's that's, that's, that's it, huge. It, it, think of this as like fundraising for us to do cool stuff. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, and then aside from that, later on at the end of the meeting, um, we're going to be talking about elections, and we're going to be having people give out presentations. So. If you're interested in that and or are participating. Yep, you're a nominee. Yep. 
Stay we'll, tuned. We'll have a section where we can probably nominate some other people who might be interested last minute and want to get up and call. Yeah. So, but with that, we'll, we'll go ahead and turn it over to uh, Corey. Oh, oh wait. list of all of our nominees. Here are the nominees. This is everybody. As of this point. Is, it, is, it, is this right? Is anybody not up here who wants to be up here? Are these positions? Anyone up here who doesn't want to be up here? Speak <laughs> now or forever hold your peace. Side mm -hmm. question. Uh, so I assume these full year normally elections go from like fall to the following spring. Or if not spring to the following fall. What if you're a senior and you just do like a half term and then we hold another election halfway through? Well, we could probably try we'll to make hold it work. Another, we'll, we'll make it work. Well, what I think we have in our charter is if like somebody leaves partway through, we put in like a temp, we fill it with a temporary position. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. Until the next election. Be able to be here for half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, that's good. We definitely need help. We definitely need people to help fill up these roles and be the future of this organization because not thing. everyone up here right now is going to be around. Uh, forever, and if we can, we can really turn this into something awesome. If we can figure out how we can all help self-sustain it. So definitely, if if you're not thinking about it now, please think about it. In the future. Because I think it's this is it's important important to me. I think a lot of other people that have put a lot of time and effort into the organization. So with that, let's all right go to content. In case you didn't know, we're doing the weekly content now. Yes. Uh, so just to start off, uh, last week I kind of talked about like a, a guy who was just like doing a hobby, like security pen testing stuff on Apple, and I showed you that whole thing with him scrolling through the photos. Uh, this guy seems to be doing something similar, uh, except he's doing stuff on Windows. He posted the proof of concept on GitHub. There's a link to that GitHub in the article which should at some point soon be on our website, if it's not already. Uh, it's a privilege escalation flaw in the Microsoft data, sh data sharing DLL, known as DSSVC. For anyone who's forgotten, privilege escalation is basically, I come in, is like the basic, like, I don't know, you're not gonna give something like, say, your Adobe server, you're probably not gonna give that super high permissions because Adobe gets packed really easy. You know, you're not going to give oh, like a WordPress server super high permissions because it's really vulnerable. Uh, but through something like privilege escalation, after you hack in through that, if you can get a privilege privilege escalation vulnerability going, you can then escalate yourself to something like root privileges where you can do all the admin stuff, basically free reign on the computer. Uh, this Microsoft data sharing DLL runs as a local system account, which is like really high privileges. Uh, basically, they can just get into all kinds of really critical files. Uh, it is fortunately only on Windows 10 and like the two most recent versions of Windows Server. I think it was like 2016 and 2018 or maybe 2019, I don't know. Um, this is actually the second, as I mentioned before, like just like the Apple guy from last week, this is the second zero day he's posted about Windows in less than two months. Unfortunately, he has not been waiting what is considered the industry standard of 90 days before disclosing, and he has not been contacting Windows before he discloses these POCs. Uh, last time he disclosed one, within a couple of days, we saw it that vulnerability being used in the wild to exploit people's computers, which is why it's industry standard for you to contact the person who's vulnerable and then wait 90 days before you release it to the public is because you want people like Windows to be able to patch this vulnerability before you t tell the whole world that it's there. Uh, there's, there's differing opinions on whether or not that's the right way because some people are like, well, if we don't, you know, people have the right to know that they're running a vulnerable system and if, you know, an attacker might already be using this vulnerability or maybe the software producer doesn't care to fix this vulnerability and they just won't tell anyone. And then you've got the other side, no, don't tell them, don't make the attackers aware of the vulnerability. So there's two very differing mindsets on, on this topic. Uh, this guy probably not going about it in the best way. You know, the 90, waiting 90 days after you tell the developer is industry standard for a reason. But I'll let you guys uh, make your own opinion on that. Next one, uh, it's a bit of a uh, APT report this week uh, on a newly classified APT called Dust Dust Squad. They are Russian, 
we we believe we're pretty sure they're Russian, uh, mostly because they rely on the Russian language and a lot of like their communication and stuff that we've gotten access to, uh, where some of their command and control servers that we've found because they were not properly secured that we got access to after the fact, stuff like that. Uh, we're pretty sure they're Russian, especially in part because of some of their uh, target choices, which tend to be Central Asian countries, uh, normally diplomatic ent entities of some sort, like um, like embassies and stuff like that. Uh, they use the Delphi language, which is like apparently kind of popular with with like Middle Eastern to Central Asian eight, um, threat actors. Uh, they specifically like to use the octopus3.php malware back in 2017, and they've actually gone back, reworked it into this Telegram Messenger, like, pretender, basically. It's trying to advertise itself as a replacement for the Telegram Messenger, which was banned in the country of Kazakhstan. And so it's trying to get out there and be like, hey, use this app, it'll totally replace Telegram, and it's not banned so that they can try and get in and, and hack people. Uh, this is just one of several APTs, though, that have shown an increasing interest in this area of the world, so that might be a really important place to look to into the future, uh, politically speaking. We'll see. Uh, for the recommended reading of the week, um, Android, or Google specifically, is reworking their contracts for their... Uh, for suppliers of Android devices, that's going to require them to supply, at the very minimum, security updates for at least two years after the device's production. Uh, this is going to be retroactive to devices that were uh, produced back in January 2018, so beginning of the year. Um, there's an update on one of the authors of the Mirai botnet that you guys might remember. We've talked about it a couple times before. Uh, he got a lot of fines. He got like several thousand hours of community service um, in like, what was that, six, say six months of confinement? So uh, that's a lot less than he probably could have gotten. I did an article a few months back, I think, about how he was getting a more lenient sentence because he had been helping out uh, the DOD and the FBI and a couple of other law enforcement agencies with finding other threat actors in the country, so. Um, Eight to six million in fines? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. He's done so. Yeah, a little bit. Um, okay. This next one, it's about uh, basically finding uh, just the different groups and volunteer activities out there for people who are trying to find uh, fraudsters. Uh, oh, this one I thought was really cool. Uh, Red Hat got bought by IBM for, I believe it was $34 billion. Maybe it was, it was, it was in that 30 something billion dollars. I'm pretty sure it was 34. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, Cambridge Analytica fiasco that Facebook went through, they, they got a finalized fine through on that. It's something like 500,000 euros, which is like a slap on the wrist. Just don't do that again or you'll regret it. Yeah. Sort of. Uh, a Russia Triton ICS malware. I didn't think this article was super great, so why I didn't really go into detail on it. It was missing a lot of de of uh, details about the actual malware. It's the same thing with this one on a privilege escalation vulnerability in Linux. It was just like super simple, not a lot of detail. Oh, but this last article is pretty important because Windows Defender is officially the first antivirus software that is capable of being sandboxed. Hmm. Which is pretty important because, like, it's any of our software that is sandboxable, like, you can sandbox it so that, like, let's say it is breached, yeah. it can't go beyond, like, a certain span. Interesting. Uh, I, I thought it was pretty interesting. It's not, like, a lot of information, but they do kind of go into why it's important, why it's going to change the industry going forward. Uh, but not a lot of details, like, technical details on, like, how that's going to help you. So. I'm going to pass it over to Chris now. All right, so uh, last week we kind of talked about the MITRE framework a little bit. So if you weren't here, just to catch you back up to speed. Splashing. 
The uh, MITRE framework is basically a large collection of techniques abstracted from what malware does in the, the wild. And it's currently being used to kind of like generate new malware like techniques on the fly for red teams to kind of produce. So we're going to go over how that compares to the cyber kill chain a little bit. And then we're going to dive into the initial access techniques very briefly, i.e. list them. And then we're going to go through some examples. And then um, we might play with Backdoor Factory if we have time. The fun tool. So, is your mouse pointer? This is the cyber kill chain. This is just another visualization for it. At one end we have recon, and then the other end we have uh, maintain, which is just maintaining access. So most of the MITRE attack system is between exploit and maintain. So that involves uh, getting access to the system, interacting with your malware once it's deployed, and just kind of doing your objectives, I guess. So we're going to go over initial access a little bit. There's eight initial access techniques listed in MITRE. And can I just switch my laptop in? Yeah, sure. All right. So they kind of divide pretty evenly between purely machine-based and also just kind of taking... Oh. Okay, we can do that. Is it close enough? Hmm? Is it close enough? Uh, and then taking advantage of just, uh, you know, human vulnerability. All right. All right. It's more slack. Is it in? I think on your computer you have to like really like work to get it in there because of the plastic. Right. I think my port's just fucked. Oh, there it goes. All right. Awesome. So I'll just pull them up. Not zoom in. Um, so basically, we have drive-by comp uh, compromise, which is basically like you have a website that's got a bunch of malware on it, and if you just go to that website, it'll infect you. Um, that's a pretty popular one. It was big in 2006, kind of time when uh, ad networks first like started popping up everywhere because people would inject uh, malicious skip scripts into their images. There's actually a DEFCON talk about a guy who basically did that from a job he got in Craigslist. Um, exploiting public facing application, this is more of like the hacking the systems kind of you know, Hollywood deal. So basically, if you have a vulnerable website like some old version of Drupal, people can execute code on your system. And this is basically all of these boiled down just to trying to get exec execution capability on the remote system in any way. Hardware additions. So, um, AJ, do you have the rubber ducky? Yep. So, we're actually going to do a quick demo. I'm kind of flying through this because we have elections tonight too. But a hardware addition is considered any like hardware added to a system that's being tested. Um, an example of this would be the USB rubber ducky. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a, it looks like a USB stick, but it has the full functionality of a human interface device keyboard, HID keyboard. It's really so, small, you probably can't see it, but yeah. I don't have my plastic case on this. Yeah, USB. typically you cannot tell these apart from a normal USB and they exploit the fact that a system, if you plug a USB in and it says it's a keyboard, it will just blindly trust that the user is putting in what that keyboard is saying. So you can do all kinds of things with these. Is that running Windows? No. Not running Windows? No. I have a payload set up for Windows. All right. So that payload would, if you plug it in your computer All right. to Windows, unlock. If well, anybody has a Windows 10 computer and wants to try, it should just open up YouTube and rip roll, rip roll you. <laughs> I don't, I, don't try it. I don't want to see this. You just throw it. Yeah. Just throw it. Yeah. I kind of want to see this. Actually, I haven't tested this. I just put the payload on it today. So basically, because of the fact that that only emulates a keyboard, those can actually the software itself can actually be moved to multitude of devices. And if you look for it on the internet, you can even find versions of that software that have been ported to Android. Yeah. 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 But AJ didn't tell you, so it's also secretly putting a bomb on your computer. I gotcha. Yeah. It's going to blow it up later. Your battery's yeah, about to explode. Yeah, it's like, 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 yeah, it's like,
similar to that, um, although that one would probably be called a hardware edition. They can be both. Um, so an example of that would be Stuxnet. Everyone knows that it was air, on an air gap network and it jumped between USBs. Um, so that was pretty interesting. You know what an air gap network is? Air gap networks a network that's just not connected to the internet. It's yeah. a network like inside, uh, you know, a top secret facility, right? The only people who are on that network should be people who have clearances inside the building. Should not be able to talk to the outside world wide web. Yeah, many um, clearances for power plants and just kind of general classified stuff is typically air gapped because you want to reduce the chance of it getting infected or anything excellent getting out. Uh, spear phishing attachment. So this is just sending someone an email that has a bad attachment on it. We'll kind of dive into that with uh, backdoor factory a little bit. But basically, if you've ever received email ever, you should know how this one works. Uh, someone sends you a chat attachment and then you download it and open it, and it's like, oh, it's just a doc file. And it's got a bunch of macros in it, maybe. And then it like blows up your computer. Do you guys know what macros are? Macros are essentially code that you can write, like BB script, and you can write it on like a Word document. So when someone opens your Word document, it says, hey, you need to enable macros to view this document. If you enable macros on a malicious document, that document can basically use uh, its privileges to download a file and pull more malware down on your computer. Yeah. That's typically the first stage is the malicious word document with the second stage being what it pulls down. Yeah, and this is typically also the most used entry vector for APTs um, in terms of initial access and because it works just so much of the time. Um, oil rig, Leviathan's on there. Those are all big APTs that launched basically this year. Dark Hydrus, I don't remember that one. Yeah. Spear phishing link is kind of the same thing, except you are given a link and then it kind of might chain into the drive-by compromise where the website is infected itself and it gets you. You could be sent a link and, I mean, drive-by compromises still happen today. Yeah. If, you, if you've been at a physical site that is malicious, still yeah. you've got. And then spear phishing via service. So this is basically the same concept, but instead of sending it directly to you, it's going to go indirectly through social media. Um, kind of saw a lot of this with every election ever. So since 2008, every time there's an election, people go on social media for whatever reason and just click every single link they can find. So this is actually probably happening right now, a higher rate than it has been for the last two years. I don't know if this falls or any that per se, but there's a lot of malvertising yeah. advertisements on the side of your you know, screen or whatever, on whatever site you're going to. You click on that and it will essentially act as a spear phishing layout or spear phishing via service and try to compromise your computer by drive by infection or, or whatnot. Yeah. We know what sites you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, all of them. Yeah. All those religious sites. <laughs> yeah. And then supply chain compromise. Um, if you read the was it Bloomberg article about the, the hardware implants coming out of China. Do you want to read that? Do you want to read that Bloomberg? Do you want to not read that? That was some crazy shit. So it's a tiny chip the size of the tip of a pin. It's like, oh, you showed me that. It was put yeah. on uh, basically half of, just... half the size of a grain of rice, and it looked like uh, some kind of signal processor. And basically, uh, the idea is it was on these boards, and it was injecting shellcode into the operating system as they came on. And, like, I mean, from and it disk. was on Supermicro's manufactured is... motherboards, which they sell to... It's, it's entirely conjectured, you know, apparently. Yeah, this is all alleged. Like, yeah. Bloomberg hasn't been able to give any evidence for anything they've said. Yeah. However, about three weeks before that, there was an article that said Apple was trying to create their own supply chain. So yeah. it's an interesting lineup of events. So, and then trusted relationship, this basically means spies. Um, you know, you send someone to a company and you want to steal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And the valid accounts is basically um, if you, you know how data breaches work, basically people will export a database of users like 90% of the time, and then they'll sell all that information. People will just buy that information and then use it on any website they can until it works. So that's an example of that. Um, I think Google had, no, Facebook had a breach last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's um, Dumpmon, it's a Twitter account, D-U-M-P-M-O-N. And um, I mean, it's a perfect example of this uh, access. Yeah, you just pull it up. 
Oh. Uh, so have I been? Oh, did I spell that right? Yeah, yeah. Look up, look up yeah, Gummon. Look up Gummon. This is a great website. If you've never heard of it, you just basically put in your email, and the guy who runs it is actually a security researcher who watches for that kind of data breach, and then he will send you an alert if you have been exposed in a data breach. I think they even include the top data breaches of all time in the recent ones. Yeah, Mac forums accounts recently. Anyway. Digimon. What is it, what is it called? Dumpmon. D-U-M-P-M-O-N. P. P. Close enough. Dumpmon. And Dumpmon is directly hooked into Have I Been Phone. Oh, OK. Makes sense. So I mean, essentially, you can click on any of these. And um, it, they'll, they'll have like a list of emails. Sometimes that email's in clear text password of that account and what those accounts are on. Uh, sometimes it's a hashed password. But uh, I mean, this is pretty much how people can go and grab your accounts. Yeah. So basically, the only way to defend against that is just continually rotate your passwords, which is actually pretty good practice. If anyone uses LastPass, it'll basically tell you to do that after a while. All right. And then that's all of them. So, did the demo with Bash Bunny? Does everyone have their laptops with them tonight? Maybe. So, if you have Kali, this should already be built in. Everyone should have access to Kali because I posted that link and I pinned it to General. It's got a link to a box folder I got that has a Kali OBA file in it. So, yeah. And, Tal and Kali is a tool called Backdoor Factory. And what this is, is basically it's a, a, it's basically a, a attachment poisoning tool. So when you open an attachment or an exe, it'll run a backdoor and then continue what it's supposed to do. Um, this is no longer maintained because the guy was afraid he was going to get um, arrested for as an accomplice in like, you know, malware development. But it still works. Um, so if we have, do we have time to do this? Yeah, we have time, a little bit of time. Yep. And then we can kind of watch this. So I'm pretty sure all you need to do is clone the repo and then run the Python 3 code. But it's already on Kali. It is, it, yeah, it's on Kali. If you have Kali, then you're good. You should have this. If you don't have so, Kali, or if you have Docker, it looks like you have Docker down there. Scroll down. I think it's done. Yeah. Docker. If you have a Docker, Docker installed on your computer, you should just be able to pull this image and you can run the backdoor factory. Do you want to do a little demo of it? Yeah. I'm just cream my neck to see. So I mean, do you have a Kali instance that you can get on? Double you. Um, all right, well, if you don't have a Kali instance, feel free to partner up with somebody who does have a Kali instance. Um, if you don't have a Kali instance too, also feel free to. So what the Docker poll looks like, which is kind of fun to watch. I'm not saying a lot. Sure. Download it. Where's my mouse pointer? Give Kali, go ahead and try to test to see if you can even run back door. I don't think I have any binaries in there. Do you need to give it a binary? Um, yeah. So what this does is it hooks into a precompiled binary, and I think what it does is it latches into the main. I can't really see it latching in anywhere else. And then it adds some obfuscated, basically, sh shell code that'll open a back door while it does its thing. So I got that running. So this is what it should look like once you've gotten the uh, Docker image running. Yeah. So we get our splash. Yeah, file to backdoor. Um, I think it works on PEs, which are Windows, EXEs, and DLLs, and also ELFs, which are um, you know Linux files. So, I don't really 
really have anything right. A lot right. of options. Yep. All kinds of crazy options. Let's see if there's a demo so I can just do it. So you have a do you have any executable or anything we could drop in there? Do it. Do you want do you wanna uh, manage and get that up and running when we do elections or Yeah. We'll come back to this. Cool. Alright. Alright. Alright, so election time. That's what it's about. So I think Hayden, did you make a little poll for that? Well yeah, but I figured first people would uh we'd make your speeches? Yeah. Okay. Alright. So do we have uh, that election that election slide? Yeah. After that, go, after this one. Go no go hell around. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. All right. So um, I'll go ahead, and I guess I'll uh, I'll kick things off and give my give my little speech. Keep speeches to like under a minute. I'll, yeah, I'll be I'll be really quick. I'm just saying for everyone. Yeah. All right. So I've been with Cyber EC since the very beginning, as I know a lot of other of you guys have. Um, I, I love this organization. I pour my heart and soul into it. I love the people of this organization. Um, I, I want to keep doing more with this organization, but I think this organization would be better off if we had another president that could move up into this position. Uh, I feel that I could be involved better from a mentor standpoint uh, to be able to help and lead this organization from from that angle. I'm more than happy to continue on with my presidency. I still have the rest of this school year and the rest of the following school year to be president, but I think that uh, it would be very, uh, very interesting. It would be good on for me and probably good for the organization if we could try to fill in these roles. But all roles should be filled um, and if not all roles are filled, then I'll, I'll stay as president. So. But, but for me, if you want to keep me in, if you want me to keep staying around here, stick around doing what I'm doing, um, and that, that's my uh, smallest feel. Do you want to stand over here where like the webcam is? Yeah. Like... Oh, my bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll stand over here. Hi, I'm Cliff. Uh, I've talked to some of you, most of you, hopefully. Some of you I haven't met yet. Uh, I'm running for president. I'm, I've been a member of cyber at UC or UCyber, whatever you want to call it, for uh, a little over nine months, I think. I, I love this organization. I have, I've really enjoyed pretty much every meeting and every exec meeting that I've gone to. And I, uh, I'd like to help this organization grow and make sure that other people can enjoy it just as much as I have. That's it. Hello, uh, my name is Ryan Young, if you don't know me. Uh, so I'm running for president of this organization. There are several things I want to do, mostly to continue what uh, AJ has done for us so far for the past two years. Um, so I, I want to keep like the format of how we do the, the general body meetings, uh, keep, keep the exact meetings at Mr. Sushi, of course. And, and, uh, there's one, one more thing that, uh, we still need to like really establish. Uh, so far we, we have the cyber lab right now. It's just, it's just infrastructure work. It's kind of dull on Mondays cause it's just infrastructure, not, no, not enough cyber. So. I want I want to try to push uh, for that lab to get to get finished when I'm uh, president. And uh, that, I didn't know that was funny. Uh, yeah, I want I want to get that done so we can actually do real cyber stuff because I think it'll be huge. It'll be huge for the organization. We we can just have demos here. It'll be amazing. And then finally, I want to do a. Uh, put put my greatest effort into trying to get uh, pizzas at every single meal. <laughs> Knew he was gonna so, pizza in the speech. <laughs> hey, we need. It. <laughs> and yeah, both for Ryan Young. All right.
Y'all don't have a choice, but I'm gonna I'm gonna sell myself anyway. Uh, I'm Hayden. I've been with the club since I joined in like January, and I've been. Uh, I think I jumped into like running the live stream like my second meeting, and then I've been taking on the website, and so I want to keep doing cool things, keeping things going, doing awesome stuff. Yeah, I mean I don't know. That's uh, that's all I really got to say. <laughs> you don't have a choice. I'm need a good speech. <laughs> Got my boat. Uh, Ryan Boss. <laughs> we would have got Ryan my boat. Ryan, you went to Well, I'm Ryan Boss. Um, so I've been here since the beginning as well. Um, just kind of took up the treasurer role from the very start, get go. Uh, me and AJ have been from pretty much nearly every meeting, besides like maybe like four to five, to be honest. Um, so I've kind of created a uh, financial apparatus for this organization and stuff, um, but uh, I'm graduating this year at the end of this year as well. So um, it would be really nice to find a mentor or for me to go step back and mentor someone in the treasurer position. So, but I will always fulfill the role I need to, and I will help. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll do something quick. Yeah. Drop me in. I know how to count. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Alright, Okay, everybody, my name's Timothy Robert Holstein. Um, go by Robbie. I know, very complex. Call me Tim, Rob, you know, OG Bobby Johnson, whatever you want. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> anyway, um, that's now, uh, obviously, I'm the only vote, but that's good for me. I'm a monarchist anyway. Democracy is illegitimate, but still, vote for me. <laughs> Secretary. All right. Chris. Yeah. 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 Chris. 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 Uh, what's up, everybody? My name is Kyle Hardison. For the those of you that haven't met me yet, I've also been with this club since not quite the very like beginning, but probably within the per the first six months I've been with it. Since then, um, everybody else is really good at spending money. I'm really good at bringing money in, and so I think uh, you should keep me in this role because <laughs> my goal for the uh, next year is to bring in a mentee to work under me to learn how to the ins and outs of fundraising, and also I want to be able to raise enough money to fund an additional person for DEF CON if we can. So, that's all I got. Yeah. Did we have a speech for Ryan O'Connor? Like, in digital form? Uh, we don't there? have a speech for that. Oh, no. I think it might be like 60 minutes long. Like four yeah. <laughs> I don't think we have time. <laughs> all right, so we'll go to Head of Public Affairs. Hey. hey. I have a camera. Yep. Okay. I'm Iggy. I have been running the social media accounts for about six months. And I'd like to take that even further. Maybe bring in guest speakers. I, I like being the public face of the club through the social media accounts and networking with different people in the field, such as the AI Village at DEF CON. Um, involved with that on the side. And that's all I got for you guys. Woo! 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 So we have from Jai. So Jai, Jai sent me a speech. So I'm going to read that report. Jai is out of town. So yeah, he's at he's, he's uh, not work trip. Lately. He's in Portland. Uh, okay. So just imagine me as Jai. I have spent the last couple of years as the head of the Public Affairs Committee. And throughout my time here, I have made a positive impact with this committee and with the organization itself. My experience with being a leader here has given me opportunities to improve different areas of this committee with designating members with responsibilities to achieve the goals of the club. Our mission is to reach out to the public and raise awareness of our organization and to inform the public of what we're trying to achieve and show off our accomplishments. I have helped the club in various ways, such as setting up and maintaining our social media networks, creating graphics and flyers for social events and meetings, automating posts for our social media feeds, 
and most importantly, making the executive meetings weekly to coordinate with the other heads within the club and bouncing ideas with the president and vice president. I believe I've given a lot to this position and I've been very dedicated since the inception of this organization and would like to continue to be the, to lead this position until next year when I graduate and help make this committee the best it can be. My goal for the next year is to help build a chapter's reputation with other organizations and clubs, create social events to promote our club and to collaborate with other clubs, to continue to make a long lasting precedence and set a positive environment for future generations of this organization. This is John. You're not gonna clap for me? Woo! Hi everyone, I'm Mahathi. I'm a first year studying computer science, so I've been with Cyber at UC for, what is it, like the ninth or tenth week? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm super excited to be part of the organization. Um, already helps out a lot, um, creating some outreach events at the high schools. Um, getting in contact with different high schools as well as um, what I talked about earlier in the meeting, um, a social event, which is really cool. Um, so if I continue as the head of out outreach, I'd really like to continue doing more outreach events um, and bringing more representation into the organization. Um, it's super intimidating being um, the only first year um, in the executive group and is only um, female. Um, so hopefully um, doing my best part to represent that and then bringing more people in, um, bringing more girls in, bringing more um, younger students, and then hopefully continuing the legacy that you all created. Um, and that's why I think it's super important that I get this position and keep this position, position go growing so um, you create a long lasting impact for years to come. Awesome. You want to talk again? Uh, yeah. yeah! I just got a 0 What? I just got a 0 16. Yeah, Last Greg! Woo! Oh boy! <laughs> oh god. You said other was an option on this, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, right now I'm running against other. And I can't really think of anyone else who could fit this role, honestly. When I was thinking of the speech, I was thinking of all the things I've done and all the things that, you know, are good about me. So I, and I, that just got too long. So here are the things that are bad. That's my speech. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That is uh, everybody. So uh, now we will go. If you all have your laptops, or you can probably do this on your phone, this is the link to vote. It will ask you to sign Ooh. into your Google account, but I we will not be able to see who voted for who. It's just Google's just doing that. I, I checked the option. Don't let people vote twice. So, huh? Yeah, uh, just post in Slack too. Yeah. Okay. Or actually, I mean, some of the slides too. We'll post in Slack. It's like a, I made it a short URL and I made it really really big. Boing. <laughs> They are because of put everything aside. I thought this might can't bring it. We stop. While you're doing this, don't forget to sign in if you haven't already. Yeah, just sign in. <laughs> And then it'll be next week. No, I can't confirm. Oh, I am leading in the race for vice president. Yeah. So. <laughs> Are you the only one with the fucking results? Are you serious? The one for it. We have a new APT in the room. APT hate. I call shenanigans. I'm a, I, I, I can share this with the other execs. I, just, <laughs> wait, just, wait, I created this. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. wait, hey, wait. He shifts, but he has to part his hair. <laughs> 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 
so who? What? Someone said what? Someone voted for Hayden Schiff, but he has to part his hair. <laughs> oh, now I want to change my vote. Yeah. <laughs> Don't read off the votes yet. All right, yeah, we're all done. Yeah. We're all done. Raise your hand if you're done. You yeah. voted. We are submitted. It was probably just. Yeah. I don't think Brian voted. Did you, did you, did you submit done. your votes? <laughs> Iggy? Almost. Uh, they wouldn't let me. <laughs> won't let you on the phone? I just did. I was just in Slack. I would, but I had to sign into my Google account and I have two factor enabled, so it would be a pain. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right, well, um, should we. Amy, you want to bring it up here? Bring yeah, I mean, I'll just. I'll just. We should probably just. Chris, do you want to do your last thing? Okay. Chris? Chris? Yeah. Okay. Um, I asked Chris if it was What? Go in case sending order. Do President last. Yeah, President last. Oh, okay. So everyone has voted, to be clear. No, I wanted the suspense. Greg Parker loses to Despite vote, despite write-ins for Jesus Christ and Rekarb Gerg, Greg Barker is the new head of recruitment and retention. Jesus. Uh, we are the same people, all three of us. <laughs> the head of outreach is Mahathi. <laughs> the head of public affairs is Jai. Yeah. Woo. The head of finance is Kyle. Woo. Woo. With no competition, the head of content is Chris. <laughs> These pie charts are just circles. They don't even look like... <laughs> With with uh, uh, Robbie is secretary. Woo. Ryan is treasurer. Yeah, okay. Me is vice president. What's the fill in? What? Huh? The what? The fill in. The there was just one that was Hayden Schiff, but he has to part his hair. <laughs> Had one vote, and all the other votes were for just me. Recount. <laughs> <laughs> and president is Cliff. Okay. Yeah, Cliff. Sweet. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, what's up, bro? Ryan? Hey, how you doing? Hey. Oh, you rolling in the elections? I know. I have class till seven twenty, and I gotta walk all the way to the side. Of the campus now, right? All right. All right. Well. I Maybe, almost uh, lost. We missed that. We missed that. So. Jesus Christ. Not a big deal. How, how's the head of finance? So, huh? still, Kyle's head of finance. Okay. We we all voted and went through that. So. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got that. Send us a send us a speech or something, man. But uh, not a big deal. All right. So, do we want to do this demo, Chris? Do we have time for that, or are we gonna do that another time? I have to do it another time. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, I'd like to uh, I'd like to congratulate um, everybody on their Thank positions you. tonight. Uh, I think this is big. This is a big step for Cyber UC. This is our first official elections we've held in the history of ever. So this is it's a big deal for us. So. Um, we need to keep this kind of running. We need to keep these elections going. We might, you know, try to work some uh, other elections in in the spring for people who are leaving. If that's the if that's the case, if you're leaving, we'll hold more elections. Um, but with that, thanks for coming to Meeting 75, and you know, I, I hope to see y'all next week. And good luck with uh, your exams, school, and whatever. And then, uh, if you got a, if, if you did get a uh, position. Um, and you're not, is, are you in the executive channel? Everyone who got a position? Are we all in the executive channel? If you're not, I'll get you in the executive channel. I don't think so. I got all my back. Okay, cool. And then uh, I guess I'll see everybody who won this uh, this Sunday. And anybody else who wants to come to our uh, Mr. Sushi meetings to learn more about how we are uh, transitioning into the next Saturday. phase of Cyber UC. Yeah, so we'll yeah we'll figure that out there. Chipotle. And on Saturday for Chipotle, got yeah. yeah. um, to Chipotle. To or as your all right, to please. If you're at all interested, see you, Josh. If you're more, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the. So so go yeah. You cannot give these out outside Chipotle. We will not get anybody. Uh,
How far do I, can I be? It looks like a block. Okay. So and if anyone sees the hacker, he's on. Don't be within the.